in that piece of paper. Question number four, Greg O'Connor. Uh, to the Minister uh, for Disability Issues, what events has he recently hosted regarding the employment of people with disabilities? The Honourable Carmel Cipollone. This morning, Minister Jackson and I hosted the launch of the new Disability Employment Support Practice Guidelines, a best practice guide that details how to ensure any disabled person who wants to work has opportunities to receive skilled support to get work. I want to acknowledge the vision and commitment of the New Zealand Disability Support Network who brought the sector together to develop these guidelines and those groups from across the sector that took part in developing the guidelines. The views, experiences and aspirations of disabled people have been included. As it's often said, nothing about me without me. Um, why are the employment practice support guidelines important? Mr Speaker, New Zealand is missing out on the economic and cultural contribution that disabled people can make. Only 25 per cent of disabled people are in employment, yet 74 per cent of non-working disabled people want to work. Even more concerning, the number of disabled young not in any kind of employment, education or training, is about four times higher than their non-disabled peers. And we need to accept we have a problem when we are told today at the launch that disabled university graduates have the same employment outcomes as non-disabled high school graduates. While there are some disabled people who can't work, this gap is too wide. This is why improving the employment experience of disabled people is key. Um, what are the employment practice support guidelines? The guidelines outline best practice for employment support services working alongside both disabled people and employers to tailor work opportunities to address their respective needs. By setting clear expectations, the guidelines will help improve disabled people's employment order, outcomes. Order. Sorry, I'm going to ask the member to resume a seat. Um, I, I think Mr McIndoe, Mr Hudson and Mr Robertson um, could all show, all show some respect uh, for this question. Uh, I'd ask the Minister to restart her supplementary answer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The guidelines outline best practice for employment support services working alongside both disabled people and employers to tailor work opportunities to address their respective needs. By setting clear expectations, the guidelines will help improve disabled people's employment outcomes. The guidelines make absolute sense. It is a great tool, but it is only part of what needs to happen, and I can assure the disability sector and New Zealand that there will be more work in this space, and I'm sure the general public will take it more seriously than what Tim McIndoe is doing right now. A, a point of order, the Honourable Tim McIndoe. Mr Speaker, I take great offence at that comment and would ask the Minister to identify whatever it was that I was supposed to be doing. Speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, I can easily identify for Mr McIndoe. He suggested that um, the questioner should ask the Minister what she had for breakfast. That's disrespectful to people with disabilities, Mr McIndoe. Speaking, further, a, speaking further yeah, speaking the point to the of, point order, of order, the Honourable Tim McIndoe. Uh, the, Minister, the Minister of Finance is picking up on an interjection that happened some time before the Minister made her gratuitous comment. The two are not related, and I continue to take offence at them. Speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Cameron. Uh, the, the member was also inferring that this was a waste of space in terms of no, being no, asked in this House. Yeah, I attended that breakfast this morning in my capacity as the ACC spokesperson for, uh, for the opposition. I take the issue very, very seriously, and I continue to take offence at the suggestion. Well, I'm. I'm not prepared to require a withdrawal uh, from the minister. There was an interjection from the member and the member in front of him during the answer. I did not hear the detail of it, but it clearly, it clearly did cause offence. Uh, the interjection caused offence, uh, and the fact that the minister um, was a supplementary later in, in responding to it um, was probably inappropriate, but not to the point where I'm going to require its withdrawal. Everything, everything as part of this exchange is on the record. The Honourable Jerry Browning. Uh, Mr Speaker, the um, long-standing uh, convention in this House has been that if a member takes offence, then that should be accepted, uh, and that the person causing the offence 
should do something about it. Now, for a minister, who, we know it's an unequal contest in here. It, it always is. We get to ask the questions, and then the answers can range across a broad range of topics, etc., etc. But for a gratuitous flick like that at the end of a question, uh, I think it's completely uh, out of out of order, and a, and a gross misuse of the opportunity to stand uh, with the microphone uh, in, uh, in front of the full house and anyone who happens to be watching. The Honourable Grant Robertson. Mr. Speaker, in the last Parliament, uh, rulings made by the previous Speaker uh, indicated that it is no longer uh, the case that it is automatic. Uh, that offence, if it's taken, requires a withdrawal and apology. That ruling was made by the previous speaker. Mm. And, and, and in my experience, um, for the vast majority of my career, it's not been automatic. Um, uh, we're not, you know, um, uh, we're not petals. People need to be a little bit robust um, when uh, when these things uh, are occurring. And I think, especially. It, I think especially when people are involved in interjecting, uh, the fact that there is something which comes back in their direction is part of the ebb and flow of this House. The Honourable Tim McIntyre, I think, wants to add further. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The point I was making is that in her comment, the Minister was suggesting that I was doing something now. Now, at that point, and in fact, at least for a minute beforehand, I had said nothing. Uh, certainly nothing about my body language that could have caused her any concern. Members of the public watching this exchange on the television will only have seen the Minister speaking and would presumably come to the conclusion that I was doing something that was offensive. The point I'm making is I certainly wasn't, and I was asking the Minister to explain what it was that was offensive, and because I found it an offensive uh, suggestion, mm. I asked her to withdraw it. Mm. Okay. Right. No, well, I... Can I just, Mr. Um, Speaker? Well, I, I, I don't think there is one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry? Point of order. A further point of order, Louise Upson. Um, Mr. Speaker, it, it's not related to this matter, is it? Because uh, we have, we, I have ruled on that. I've been fairly liberal with Mr. McIndoe no, and a, Mr. Bra Mr. Brownie afterwards, and the, and the member's not going to continue, is she? No, it's a separate point of order. A separate point of order, the Honourable Louise Upson. Uh, in question four and question five yesterday, as well as this question now, uh, a minister in their answer has used their answer to an oral question for a, a gratuitous statement. Uh, in opposition questions to ministers, you are very clear about stopping a member for asking anything additional and including anything in the answer that doesn't need to be there. I'm interested, Mr Speaker, if you are creating a new ruling that allows ministers to have gratuitous flicks at the side of the House. And my view is that the member has just in absolute contradiction to the assurance that she gave me at the beginning of her question raised the very same matter and as a result of that the opposition will lose two supplementary questions. A further point of order? Mr Louise Speaker, Upstam. the point of order that I understood immediately before me was around the issue of a member taking offence in this House yes. uh, and the Speaker ruling on a matter of offence. So uh, I, I, I apologise, sir, but I see that as a different point of order that I was raising um, on a different matter. OK, well, I'll, 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 accept, I'll accept the member's apology. Um, we move to question number five, Simon Bridges. Mr Speaker, my question is the...